everything in the table means here. Now this, this column is, is called x. The x column. Meaning that all these, these numbers here are each going to take a turn being x and doing whatever x is doing. Okay? So in this function, x is being multiplied by 2 thirds. So for the first example, we plug in a negative 3 for x. It might be easier to write this as negative 3 over 1. And uh, we could either say, well, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So we get negative 6. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 over 3 plus 5. Okay. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2 plus 5. So y equals 3. Or maybe we did this. y equals negative, sorry, let's all stop talking about how we feel about our lives, let's pay attention, to <laughs> plus 5. So 2 thirds times negative 3 over 1, we could, instead of multiplying them together, we could also just, at this step, divide the 3s. This 3 divides this negative 3, leaving a negative 1. And now the denominator is 1, and we can just multiply 2 times negative 1 to get negative 2. And we still get 3, of course. Mm -hmm. That's I did it way different. You still got it. Yeah. I did it way different, and I got it wrong. <laughs> uh, okay. If you did it way different and got it wrong, then well, adjust. Don't judge me. And try to do it more like one of these ways. If you gave way to different and got the right answer, you could just have a different way, though I can't think of a lot of different ways to do this. Unless you found a common denominator, you could have done it that way. You know, I did it the same way, but I, I got six. Okay, well, I'll come around and look at those. Continue, uh, finish up both of these, uh, or all these uh, values. Finish up this whole thing. Also, we've got another example together. I'll do the negative two. Y equals two thirds times negative 2, although I just put it over 1. It makes it a little easier to, to work with. This time the 3 is not going to be able to divide this number that's up here like it did with the last example when this was negative 3. So we'll just multiply straight across. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 5. Okay. What do I need to do in order to add these two things together? Okay, by writing it over 1. Yeah. And then? And then you would add the 4 and the 5? No. no like yet. I don't know. Never mind. Okay. What do we need, Robert? Common denominator. Right, we need a common denominator. Oh. So we need to multiply by 3 in the numerator denominator. Okay, I'll these. And then we have to do the bottom. You, you know what? Okay. Yes. The name of the game is improvement. We don't need to tell everybody how poorly we did. Let's just improve. Let's go back and fix our mistake. Let's just do it, okay? Negative 4 thirds plus 15 thirds. 15 thirds minus 4 thirds, that's going to be 11 thirds. There's, there's no way to simplify this. They don't share any factors in common, so we're going to write it 11 thirds. We could write if we want to. Uh, three and two thirds. If we want, it doesn't really matter. And Eleven thirds, three and two thirds. They're, they're equal size. Right. Keep going. If you made a mistake, fix those mistakes. If it looks like you did well, please be patient and allow other people to progress along. Don't distract them by talking to them. If you both figured it out, you're sitting next to somebody. You, both sure that you've got it, please don't distract the class by chattering. Please be patient. Please be considerate to everyone who's trying to improve. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, if you're if you're working on one, if we go down on the page, the back side of the page, right? Just write down what we do together here. So again, I'm going to do 
Uh, another value plugged in for x, let's do negative 1 this time. 2 thirds times negative 1 over 1. I like producing over 1 so that it's easy to work with the fractions. That's 5. And we're going to multiply these fractions together, right? Because that's what 2 thirds x means. I mean, 2 thirds times x. We're going to multiply. And when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. Straight across. And when I say across, I mean straight across like this, not across like this. Across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, 2 times negative 1. Times 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Over 3 times 1 is 3, plus 5. So once again, just like the one we did previously, the last one that we worked out together, this does not divide negative 2, so we need what? Common um, 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 denominator to add these together. Good. So negative 2 thirds plus We've already done this. If the denominator is the same. It's 3 again. This is still 5. And so what will that be when we turn it into some thirds? 15 over 3 again. Again, again. 15 thirds minus 2 thirds. 13 thirds. 3 doesn't divide 13. You can't simplify it. You can write it as a mixed number if we want to, but it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, so this is now 4 and 1 third. Okay, let's do this next one, the easiest one, I think. I think that's pretty easy. Because 2 thirds times 0. I don't even need to really write 0 over 1 because I remember that anything times 0, Carter, is 0. zero. zero. So we get 0 plus 5, which five. is the easiest addition problem ever. 5. Yep. Right, let's just switch this out. Sorry. Darth, are you okay? No. Did you say dark? <laughs> dark. I was trying to see what it sounds like. No. Can I have my golf box back? I think dark. <laughs> <laughs> two thirds times one over one. Yep. Two thirds. Yourself. Everybody. Uh, if anything times one is itself. Yeah, two thirds is what we have. Plus five, which needs to get a denominator. Of three, so we do 15 thirds. 15 divided by three is five, right? That's why those are the same. <coughs> Two thirds plus 15 thirds is 17 thirds. Okay, yes. We could write that as, how would we write that as a mixed number? Five five and two it's three. 17 six. Five and two oh, thirds. Oh, I got that right. 17 six. You don't change the bottom okay. number, dude. Oh. Thank you, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, let's, let's use this opportunity to, to understand something, not just to remember a rule, okay? So if you were to make a rule that says you don't change the denominator when you add, then okay, that would work. But let's understand why we don't add the denominators, okay? Because, let's just look at a picture of what we're doing. We're taking 2 thirds, which looks like this. What do I mean by that? Okay, what do I mean by this is 2 thirds? Um, two pieces of your pie have yeah. been eaten. Okay, out so of two out of three. Who said out of three? Maybe. It's important that it's out of three, right? If it was two out of 75, it would be very different. Right? So we have two pieces, and they are this size. That's how big they are. There's three that make up the entire pie. Okay? What does 15 thirds look like? Um, three pieces, 15 pieces are cut up. Yeah. That's okay, so 15 pieces got eaten. And all of those pieces are the same size as these. They're three That's literally impossible. Well, no. We can have 15 thirds. Here's, let's copy this. Actually, let's make it smaller because it's going to take a lot of room. So here's two more thirds. Actually, let's shade in the third one, right? Okay. Because now we're, we're trying to get 15 more thirds. So there's, how many thirds is that? Three. Three, three thirds. Now we need some more. How many thirds is this? Two? Six. I mean six, six thirds, yes. Six. How yes, many thirds six. are we up to now? Nine. Nine in the, yeah, and all of these are up to nine. Okay, another one. Twelve. Okay, ask yourselves what you're doing. How is it helping you? How is it helping everyone else? Okay, so let's do things that help ourselves and help each other. 
Yeah. How many thirds are we up to now here? Not not including this, but just this stuff here. Twelve. And if I do one more, how many am I up to? Fifteen. Fifteen, 15. thirds. 15. So what I'm doing when I add two thirds plus fifteen thirds is I'm literally adding up, I'm counting up a bunch of things. What are these things that I'm pi. counting up? And we're counting up x. They're related to the pi. How are they related to the pi? Because they're y. They're, you're adding up numbers. I'm not counting up pi's. I'm counting up numbers. Numbers. parts of pi's. Parts of pi's. Yes, parts of pi's. Who said that? And they, they won't fold numbers. They said that. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so we're adding up these parts of pi's. And this number three here is telling us it's telling us something about those parts. It's telling us how big those parts are. They're this big. They're so big that if I had three of them, I'd have a whole pie. Right. And when I add them all up, they don't change to a different size, do they? They don't change to sixths. They stay thirds. They're still thirds when I count up one, two, well, let's say we have 15, 16, 17 of those. I counted them up. I have 17 of the, thing, the same thing that I started with. I don't wind up getting sixths because I added them up, I still have thirds, okay? So, it's, and it's much better than the, a rule that says don't change the denominator. That's, mm -hmm. that's not a, an understanding. Now we understand why the denominator doesn't change, because we're just counting up all these pieces. And the pieces don't change size once we get done adding them up. Okay. So, 17 thirds. Now let's let x change again to 2. 2 over 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 5. We need a common denominator again because 4 doesn't div get divided by 3. So we have to put these together like this. And when we put them together, we get 19 thirds. Okay? So that equals 6 and 1 third. I got that. Last one. The last one, two thirds times three, x is going to be three. Uh, let's just say that uh, we notice that three can divide three, at least with a positive one. Two times one is two, plus five is seven. You may have had a common denominator. You would have gotten 21 thirds. Right. 21 thirds. 21 can be divided by 3. Nope. You get 7. Again. Whatever we get, it's equal to 7. Okay. I think we're going to concentrate on today is, uh, well, just a couple more things maybe, but you still, like, there's a little bit of resistance to understand what a graph is. You know, try and keep driving that point home, okay? Yeah. Over and over and over, because it's tiring for both of us, for you and for me, when we don't understand what graphs are, and we think that this mysterious magical thing that needs uh, magical rules and memorization tricks to complete a graph. That's not true. If we can do this, we can draw a graph. Because graphs and these things here are Essentially the same thing. One at least represents the other. Okay. So let's bring over some x and y axes. Whoa. Okay. So how do I begin with this all this work that I've done? How do I graph the graph of this equation? Zach? Well you just go off x and y. Exactly. You go off x and y. Here's x, here's y. And I have x and y seven different times, right? So I should wind up with what over here? Seven different points. points. In, in straight, so they will be in a straight line. Are all graphs straight lines? No. No, good. They are not all straight lines. So I'm going to plot all these points. And if you have any trouble with graphs currently, make sure to serenade your friend across the room, because that is going to be the most helpful thing you can do. Or maybe we should all take a look at the board and not serve our friend across the board. Sir? Do you just want Sarah? Sir? <laughs> 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 um, I'm not getting my cocoa house. Never. 
He's gonna eat them. Do you pay for those? Alexa class being wasted talking about Cocoa Puffs. Not me. Okay, so let's give it a break. All right, so we go off the X and Y, exactly like Zach said. Let's just, on the X axis, plot what X is. On the Y, in the Y direction, plot what Y is. So X is negative 3 and Y is 3. Gosh, that was an easy point to plot. Because it's right there on those, those grid lines, right? Yeah. Perfect. Now, this one's a little trickier. Negative 2 and 11 thirds, or negative 2 and 3 and 2 thirds. Okay. Well, the x is negative 2. That's easy enough. 3 and 2 thirds. 1, 2, 3, and 2 thirds. It's almost a 4. It's not quite. What's it's confusing not about it? No. it is. is it confusing, or is it just a little bit tricky to graph? No. It's just a little bit tricky. No. No. It's just a little bit I tricky. thought the line was going to go down. Carter, I don't think you're paying attention. So then, yeah. It's good. Do you want to have anything written down? It's okay? Okay. Yeah, great. All right, so let's do the next one. Negative 1, y is 4 to 3rd. Negative 1 for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1 more 3rd. That's where that point would go. And ooh, we're noticing a pattern in these points as we draw them. They look like they're making a kind of a shape. I mean, what oh, shape? Line. A line shape. Right. Uh, zero and five. That was an easy one. Zero and five. Yes, there you go. Can you make like a squiggle line with that? What? Like a certain graph point. Uh, like certain equations will have graphs that are squiggly. What? All right. Like car rates and stuff? Like what? That stuff that goes up and down. The car rates. Those are. Wait, oh, so you said car rates. Oh, heart rates, I don't. That's like, like car rates. Car rates? No, car rates. Like, like car rates. Okay. Like, like you buy a car. I'm going to continue on here. One, <laughs> x is one, y is five and two thirds. x is one, y is one, two, three, four, five, and two thirds. X is two, Y is six and one third. And when X is three, Y is seven. Okay. Now that we have more than three points, we have seven points. It's really, I'm really starting to be convinced that if I kept plotting points, they would continue on this line pattern. Whether I go that way or, or to the left, they're gonna continue to fall on this straight line. And that would be true for uh, right on the, the whole numbers, if I plugged in four, right? Then I bet the next point would be right there. Or if I plugged in three and a half, I bet that point would wind up right there, right? Uh, and, and then the graph is born, right? We don't have all the time in the world to plot individual points forever and ever. And so what I do is I, I fill it in, I graph all the rest of the points, but in kind of a cheating way, right? <laughs> by just drawing a line. Cheater. Cheater, cheater, bonk, drawing that line is, is kind of a, a cheat because okay. what, what is this graph really made of? Points. Points. Did, I, did I draw those points? Yeah, well, they're, yeah, really close they're together, from so the equation. Essentially, that's what I. I cheated my way to that, right? Yeah. I cheated my way to a bunch of points. I know, I'm sorry. That's the one time that we can cheat it. Draw, drawing that shape. Okay. So when you think about a graph, don't get so tied up in like, I can't remember the y-intercept or the slope. I can't remember that stuff. If you're having trouble remembering it, it's fine. Just go back, plot it, plug in some x's and find some y's. That's exactly what we're looking for. When you plot those two points, the y-intercept, and follow the slope to find the second one, you're just plotting points. Now, if we plot enough of these, if we do enough of these graphs, we start to notice not only this pattern that it's in a straight line, but patterns for finding points that are on the line for any equation. Right? Patterns like, if it's written this way at least, we can write them in different ways, but if we write it this way, then one pattern that arises, we always notice this, this point here. Zero comma that number. Always zero comma that number. So we can plot that point because I know that, that 
x of 0, I'm definitely going to get a y of 5. And the, the y-intercept is born. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. There you go. The y-intercept. Right? Because we remember, because we, we understand that it's made of points, and points are an equation, and it's like it's an equation of 0, the y is obvious. The y is obviously 5. That Do we have homework yesterday? Because it says 1 dash 7. No, that was for the other class. This is the algebra class. Do you see that line there? You have all right. He's got it. He doesn't need a. He doesn't need a driven home. Got it. All right. Another pattern is. Do you see how we wind up with these fraction answers, fraction values for y, and how big of a bummer those are? Yeah. Okay. But then sometimes we wind up with a nice answer. Yeah. Okay. Why can't we just plot the nice answer? Why not? That's exactly, you know, and the, the slope is born, okay? Because we say, why not just plot the nice answers? Because that just doesn't work out. Because it's not the true answer. Well, everything. Well, <laughs> everything. Maybe it's not the whole picture, yeah? I give up. <laughs> it's not the whole picture. There's more exactly. points than just those two, right? It's yeah. not the true answer. Those are points. Yeah. So, like, exactly. my point, I mean, that one corn dog is not a I agree. <laughs> I agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to think about that. Okay. See, <laughs> so on average, we're having a, a, a pretty good class today. But, uh, we made better. Yes, and have so many interjections. When do those nice answers, those nice points, come up? When does it happen? Why did it happen? When we were plugging in numbers for x, when did it come out to be a nice result like 3 or 7? Every 3 is fine. Because, oh. What's that? Because the number for x matched the, um, the denominator of fraction. Okay. So it made it easy to divide, mm -hmm. and then you got a whole number You can divide by three, and how often does that happen, Emma? Every three. Every three, right? Like six, and So we didn't yeah. go to six, but now Emma's claiming so that, that if we did go to six, fractions. then we would have to do all those fractions if we noticed that oh, pattern. So we want to take advantage of that pattern. Yeah, take advantage. The y-intercept and the slope are not the graph. The graph. They're just a convenient way to figure out where the graph is. So if we were to go to 6, then we'd know by plugging in 6, we would get a nice answer, a nice value for y, rather than some fraction. Right? Let's try that. Or at least that's, that's Emma's claim. Well, Emma isn't always right, so I, I really don't know. Well, let's see what, what happens. If we do multiply straight across, there's no need to be talking, there's no need to be packing up. Okay. Two thirds times six over one is twelve over three, yeah. And look at what happened when, when we chose six, the number that went up in the numerator, now it can be divided by three. That's that's the thing that these ones were missing, right? That we couldn't divide that number by three in those cases. We can. So this becomes 4 plus 5. I don't know what that is. Plus 5 gives you 9. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we step over to 6, and we should see a point at 9. And what do you know? There it is. So now we can do the good numbers if we notice that. <laughs> <laughs> expression. What's that? Huh? Oh, you said um, I'll be a monkey's uncle. And oh. Like, oh. Bars, they're commenting. Remember that time in third grade when there was a monkey and I just get way off track. Okay. Chuckle, then bring it back. We'll save a lot of time. And everyone will be happy. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you another um, another function. It's a different kind of function. It's not going to be a line if you were to graph it. 
Okay? I don't even need you to graph it. You don't even have to worry about graphing it. All right? I'm going to give you a function for homework that I want you to just complete a table for. So we can just like put this fear and phobia of graphs to bed. Okay, so the the table's gonna be the same. Okay, I'll redraw it for you, but it's the same, the same x values. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Sir. Those are the numbers you're gonna plug in for x. Zach has a question. Um so can I do what I did earlier? Just uh, write down one like like one problem and then just change the numbers for it. Should it? Okay. Show your work for all of it. Okay. 